We want to make sure that the sensor is not shifting in between tests because it will measure wind at different angles if it shifts down or tilts up, but if it changes between the tests, you're going to have a different effect. So you want to make sure it's the same on every test. Hi, my name is Matt and I'm going to introduce our AirPro system as you would receive it and how to set up your first test today. I have with me one of our in-house AeroPro systems with uh, all the pieces you'll receive when you order the sensor. So if we pop this open. Inside, first and foremost, we have our AeroPro sensor, charging cable, and various pieces of mounting hardware for the GoPro mount. So when you receive the sensor, the Lights will most likely be off, and this is for one of two reasons. Either the sensor has run out of batteries, or it is turned off. So the only button on the AeroPro for interfacing is this top cantilever button on the bo uh, with the line on it. And so if it is off and has charge, you should be able to press that once very lightly. Not, don't need to force it or anything, and you'll see a red light, and it'll go into a boot cycle. So if we give it a moment here, we will see a white light turn on, which means that... Oh, there goes the white light, which means that it's now powered. So this white light indi just indicates power in this case. And if when you hit that button, it doesn't turn on, it means it's out of charge. So first, if it was out of charge, we'd want to navigate to the rear of the unit, pop the USB cover, take the USB type C cable that's included and plug it in. Then we want to find a reliable source of power to make sure we have power going to the unit, such as a wall charger. We've used it with laptops in the past and sometimes they throttle the charge and you don't actually have a charging unit, even though it appears to be. So we go plug that in and then once it's on power, press the button once and it should turn on. In this case, for charging the unit, we would plug it in and once we plug it in, this light would turn green. And when this light is green, it'll pulse and that'll indicate that you have a charging sensor. Um, once that uh, light turns solid green, that indicates a full charge to your users. So in order to perform an AeroPro test, we require one, the AeroPro, and ideally we'll have pulled this just off the charger and it'll be a full charge showing a solid green. We want a supported power meter. We have a list of these online of which power meters we support and ones that we trust, ideally with either a fresh battery or a brand new battery. A wheel speed sensor, again, a supported one by AeroLab, again, a fresh battery. And we're gonna to wanna to load the CIQ app for the AeroPro system onto our Garmin Edge device. We currently support three devices, all the 30 series units from Garmin, and you can download the uh, current release of the CIQ app on our website. Additionally, the CIQ app is a passive device entirely, so you can uh, sync, you want to connect the power meter and wheel speed sensor you'll be using to the CIQ, so the athlete, the rider, has feedback of what the what speed they're going, what power they're putting out, and what the AeroPro is telling them while they're doing the test. But these are purely passive measurements that don't impact the results, so you don't actually have to pair the wheel speed and power here. So there's a few key features to consider when you're mounting the AeroPro to any bicycle. And for example, is the location of the sensor. So the giant Propel here has a non-standard bar and a non-standard stem. So we had to look for some sort of uh, different method of mounting or getting a GoPro mount on this system. And so we used a uh, faceplate mount here that mounts directly to the stem bolts. This is not necessary for every single bike. Um, you might have a more easy place to stick it with a underside of a uh, head unit device with a GoPro mount, for example, and just use a single one of our extenders. You can see here that this mount brings it down and a little bit away from the rider. Ideally, you want the sensor in this sort of space here. It's a sort of sweet spot for measurements um, where you have a more uniform pressure to be measured by the AeroPro sensor. This, this, this mount is centered because this is a road bike and it doesn't have too much asymmetry. With a TT bike, it might not be as easy to put it in the center as you have, might have a little bit more going on. Um, it's not pivotal that the sensor's in the middle, but it is desired from a point of view of keeping things consistent test to test. And if you have a si significant yaw and the sensor's off center, it's gonna be measuring, it might be in a more disturbed uh, space of air. So now we're gonna mount the sensor to, uh, to the bike here. So we have the mounting hardware, and this is a, a pretty tight fit, so I should be able to place it in there and it won't fall out. I would be careful, you don't wanna drop your AeroPro sensor. So now I will line up line up the holes and, and 
put the bolt in. You should be able to get it started with my fingers. But if it's tight, you want to grab your three millimeter Allen key to thread it in the rest of the way, being careful not to let the sensor fall. Now that that's in there though, it's, there's no way it's going to fall, but it can tilt. So we need to now set up the tilt. Take our, our nut, put it on the end there. So at this point, now that the sensor can move and all the mounting hardware's on there, I would normally make sure the bike's on level ground. And I would, by eye, just make sure that this, the pitot tube is level to the ground and level to the motion of the rider. So we have our socket here to hold the nut, and we have our Allen key to turn it. So I'll put that on there. Look and level the sensor. That's probably good enough for this. And then we will finger tighten the bolt. Nothing excessive, everything here is made of plastic. You don't need it to be overly tight. So just with the ends of my fingers until it becomes difficult, it's probably enough. We wanna make sure that the sensor's not shifting in between tests because it'll measure wind at different angles if it shifts down or tilts up. But if it changes between the tests, you're gonna have a different effect. Um, and if you push down that, nothing excessive, it's not gonna move. And you can see now that we have it mounted, the pitot tube, the most important part of the measurement, is further away from the rider and down away from their hands, even if they're in some sort of TT position, uh, it's in a nice undisturbed pocket of air.